Uh, what's good, everybody? Shout out to the gang, strangers, everybody in between. Uh, my name is Kemet High. I'm an associate editor here at Double XL, um, and I'm tapping in with y'all for another episode of The Break Live. Um, this week we have a Dallas Brad Melodis, uh, the real KP. No disrespect to Porzingis, uh, but Cash Page, super rare, super pu- pure. Excuse me, talent. Uh, so I'm gonna check in with her. She should be joining us shortly. Let's see. In the meantime, though, how y'all feeling? Show her some love in the comments too. Let's see if she in this thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's go. One second, y'all. What's good? What's good? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> yo what's good? Man, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you again. How you living? Man, I'm living great, man. You know, look at us brown skins taking over the world right now. Yeah, yeah. That part. <laughs> <laughs> that part. All right, all right. Um, so, yeah, you already know we just about to talk about, about your career, your artistry. You know what I'm saying? Everything you've been up to, your career up until this point, these new drops you got, all that. All that good stuff. So you already know we done had this conversation a few times. Uh, but I really want to give your fans, you know, some insight on your story. It's, it's hella significant. So, yeah, you ready to jump into it? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Word. Um, all right, well, off rip, I know you into your fashion. Uh, you want to flex the fit real quick? You want to do the uh, the drip check? Man, I'm only going to do halfway because the, the shorts I got on not matching, but the shorts hard. I'll give it that. They Man, got yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Oh, shit. I move a little bit. Got like got the the fin black live shirt on, got the undefeated cap. Yeah. I'm sure to tell y'all, so y'all can't really see the shorts, but they, <laughs> I don't know. These ladies got three T's. They aliens, so yeah. What I throw on this the, the bed fit. To be honest with you, <laughs> let me so, see your let me see your fit. Pop that. All right, listen, I'm the same as you. My shorts don't. Look- <laughs> I got on a little uh Celtics windbreaker. Shout out to my team. A little Nike hat. You you know know what? Something calm. Something calm. Hell yeah. Now you already know. We just vibing. I feel like we we got the same style. It's like, nigga, we ain't going to do too much, too less. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's hitting. Yeah, yeah, 100. That's a fact. <laughs> um, all right, so let's let's go ahead and pop the cap off. Uh, you're 21, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, from Dallas, um, looking back, what do you think you took the most from from coming up in that environment? Like, how was, how was your experience? How would you describe it to the people? I would just say, like, I feel like life came really, really fast, you know, like just get into the industry at 18. And I just have to grow up really fast and learn how to maneuver and learn how to converse with a lot of different people. And I don't know, I feel like kind of just live life in the moment. I feel like I always used to focus on the the future, you know, when I was 18, I'm like, man, I can't wait to be 21. I can't wait to be 22. Like this, this, that, be in a club. But I was in a club when I was 18, you know, so it was just. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so it's kind of like it wasn't really much that I was missing on besides learning how to be present and you know grateful most definitely yeah you said you was in the club uh what other stuff were you into as a kid like what was what was kid cash doing on a day-to-day kid cash was for sure playing football on the streets with the boys <laughs> for sure playing basketball you know remember that um that game we threw up the football and like Everybody had to try to. It was Moss or something like you had to catch the yeah, football. What's that shit called? I know you talk about though, but facts. Yeah. You just unlock the memory. Yeah, we used to play that, and then I used to play PlayStation Two games all the time, like Tony Hawk's Proving Ground, um, Midnight Club, Blitz. Uh, yeah. What else was I playing? I was playing a lot of like different games, honestly. Zelda. So. Mm, uh, what about? Uh, what was I into as a kid? Yeah. Same shit. Um, so I grew up between like Atlanta, and New York kicking it with the homies like Atlanta's obviously more lit than than like upstate New York and stuff but just finding ways to stay busy you know riding around playing basketball walking doing bad shit like we used to take Batman rockets and hit rocks at cars just you know <laughs> finding ways to uh entertain ourselves and stuff like that y- y'all was nigga knocking we was doing uh everything that I probably shouldn't continue to disclose on this live but we was, <laughs> uh, we was we was finding the fun I'll say that much Man, I feel like as a kid, it's just like we were so innocent, didn't really, you know, care about what people thought about us. And I feel like it's always good to just tap back into the youth. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Even those memories and stuff, too, like kind of reminds you where you came from, who you are, Mm -hmm. and special things that you love about yourself. So for sure. 
I seen somebody in the comments say, have a great day. Y'all have a great day too, bro, and be safe. Yeah, that energy, start that off like that. Facts. Um, what's your earliest memory of falling in love with music? Hmm. My earliest memory of falling in love with music was me, like, just always hearing my dad, like, make music in the closet, and we made this song called Swag So Dope. And really? I'm always playing it, like, at the family functions. I was probably, like, what, 10 or 11? The sure. way it was funny, though, it was like, my swag so dope. Yeah, my swag so dope. You know, like, some kid shit. But, like, everybody's like, oh, this is hard. This is <laughs> Quite. Like, ever coming out. Like <laughs> That was your first song? Yeah, that was literally my first song. And then whenever I put my first song out, it was like this rap song with like this one boy. We were like 15 years old. Okay. And we, were, we used to call ourselves Fully Gang. I don't know why we called ourselves Fully Gang, but we just had a song called um, Skrilla. I think that was around the time Kodak Black was making Skrilla. Oh, all right. So what, what year is this? It's like, I can't remember when Skrilla came out. Maybe like 15? Yeah. Yeah, it was. I think it was like 2016, 2015, because I was for sure 15 in 2016. So yeah. Okay. All right. For sure. I got you. Jeez, though. So what did y'all end up dropping that? Yeah, we ended up dropping it on SoundCloud, but it didn't really do shit. Like I was people, gonna say, it was like walking around and singing it, but it wasn't like you know, like it wasn't like uh, a moment that made me be like, damn, like I gotta pursue. You know what I'm saying? Like it kind of happened whenever. I started like getting more into music and I was like, damn, like I realized a lot of people, you know, like love the sound, love this soul sound. Cause that's when SZA was dropping on uh, SoundCloud a lot. Shout and I, to her. That's what I was saying, like sobriety, like, like. Yes, I do. I'm not here with you. <laughs> so I was just like, damn, like this is an amazing sound. I feel like I got inspired by that, influenced by that. So I was just like, damn, like I'm about to just start trying to like make like some vibes like that. And Doja Cat came out with, no police and that's how i heard the uh the we can be friends beat or whatever and so whenever we used it i had made the song called dnd &D, and then that eventually became love songs yeah which we gotta get to that a little later but uh over 200 million streams and we talking just spotify alone like hit crazy but yeah <laughs> we'll tap into uh, a little bit of that later um so who would you say are some of like your influences or maybe not even influences just like artists that on top of Doja, on top of SZA that you gravitated to. Anyone else? Hmm. I would say for sure, Erykah Badu. I love uh, Lake, The Weeknd, and Frank Ocean. Yeah. A lot of Earl Sweatshirt, Isaiah Rashad, Tyler right. Yeah, like, I grew up on my future. So it was kind of like, that was more my, you know, like, my aesthetic in the sense of the way I was dressed and the way I was acting. You know, like, I feel like everybody yeah. had a moment of their life where they wanted to be um a part of loiter squad or a part of odd future yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. so I, like that was more like an influence myself someone just said the internet of course like sid the kid insane steve lacy insane mm -hmm. um, yeah listening to nirvana listening to the gorillas like i always used to play guitar hero so i always had that alternative rock feeling in my music as well and just like in my like life living i like to rage that's <laughs> hard that's hard even you naming, like, that wide power of the artist, that speaks to your artistry, you know what I'm saying? Like, all the different layers, the different approaches you take. Um, just being, like, hella versatile and not being able to be put in a box. Like, mm -hmm. that's pretty much almost all those artists, you know what I'm saying? They just have, like, all these different layers and skill sets. Facts. Facts. Oh, yeah. All right, so when, when was the moment that you decided to take music seriously? Or rather, like, what was the moment that you knew okay, I could I could do this music thing for real, for real. Mm. Like, the moment I knew I could do music for real, for real was just, like, when high school was about to be out, <laughs> you know? Like, I feel like you always get asked that question, like, what are you doing after high school? And I grew up running summer track, but I was just like, damn, like, I don't know if I want to have that as my main career, going to the Olympics or doing this, this, that. You know, I was just like, damn, I don't know if I'll be able to – be myself fully and so mm. when being around more creatives that were making music it started getting me more in my comfort zone and i started ma making music a lot of music with my friends and i was like damn like i might be able to really do this shit. and um yeah i feel like soundcloud and distro kid was the main thing for me like distro kid put me on to having 
make, starting to make money off of your music. You know, because when you just use SoundCloud, it's kind of like, okay, cool. But then DistroKid distributes your music to YouTube, Spotify, yeah. Apple, like so many different platforms. So I was like, all right, cool. Like this is actually making sense because I started seeing revenue. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. What were some of the tracks? So I know you said D&D, Turning to Love Songs. Um, were there any other songs that kind of started to catch, catch fire and get you some traction? Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people were fucking with this song I had called Orange Sweater. Like okay. the people were in that vibe. Um, it was Orange Sweater and Happy Song that I felt like were people's main joints, to be honest with you. Because Happy Song is just like, you know, like as humans, like people don't understand, like we are who we are. We have so many different emotions. We're not going to be perfect. And I feel like people see, you know, artists or see people and, you know, they're, just day like living there's like oh you need to be the certain way you need to live like this like no live how you want to live and you know as long as you're happy that's all that matters yes yeah you talking my language i'm about that peace prosperity at all times because right, it's like you know like of course you can wake up on the wrong side of bed and be irritated we get it but don't let that consume your day or don't let anybody make you feel bad for feeling that way you know mm -hmm. and i feel yeah. it's like we're all, it's all about yeah. 100 um, what's your process like? Um, I think I saw that when I was doing like some research and stuff, uh, said that you freestyle most of your lyrics. So is that fact, Kat? For sure, facts. I love freestyling all yeah. my stuff in the sense of just like that. Okay, say for instance, whenever you're cooking up from scratch, when you cook up from scratch, you actually create a vibe with that producer, whoever's in the room. Yeah. But like, you're a beat. Whenever I first started coming up, I was using like uh youtube beats so it's like that's whenever i was writing because it's like i'm sitting down with the beat i'm listening to it this this that i feel like when you get in the moment and you start meeting these labels and people put you on the spot it's kind of like you have to show you know you have to prove like that you're the one and i feel like that's what made me start freestyling more because i'm like damn i need to fucking make something <laughs> <laughs> yo that's crazy like we as fans like we listen to music and it can be like a simple idea, but I think like great writers, it always sounds intricate. So every time I feel like we hear like somebody freestyle, it's like, how do you, how do you come up with that? But like you said, a lot of people's experience is like, nah, like when you, when you're in that zone, it's going to take you there. You feel me? Like the words flow out, like the beat starts to hit in your ear and it becomes more natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's wavy. What kind of music do you listen to? You said what? What kind of music do I listen to? Yeah. Like what did you grow up on? Like what's your vibe? Man, oh, man. All right, so my mom was really into music. Um, my dad, too. So they, they had me, like, really old. So, like, OG stuff for real. My dad was, like, Temptations type stuff. My mom was more like Luther Vandross. But we was always going, like, back and forth from Atlanta to New York. So it was actually, like, the road trips where that was the best way to pass the time. 14, 15 hours, you bumping music. So everything, like, Luther, uh, Floetry, Whitney, Mariah Carey, like, and then when I got older, I, I kind of started, like, rediscovering hip-hop in a way. Like, my mom kind of censored us. Well, she tried to. You know, she didn't want to buy me no CDs. I had cussing in it. Like, I remember trying to get her to give me a Nas CD. And she was like, nah. Mind you, this is not, like, in comparison to the, the stuff that we hear today. Um, but, yeah, when I really found it on my own, it was, like, The weekend. Um, you know, even, like, his hip-hop adjacent shit. Isaiah Rashad, Chance the Rapper. Um, and I just went down the rabbit hole. Now I listen to... Whatever is fire, I'll take it to the 1975. I'll put some Florence in the Machine on that bitch. Oh, shit. Some yeah, it don't even matter. You listen to Pink Floyd? Yo, Pink Floyd. All right, so I haven't tapped into Pink Floyd, but I feel like anytime I got a boy that actually was really into them, anytime I've heard their tracks, it was fire. What should I fuck with? I feel as if, like, only reason I usually came across, like, Pink Floyd is whenever I was doing shrooms. Like, they got this, like, psychedelic type album or whatever that you listen to or it's i feel like it's just frequency music like just music that makes you feel good yeah yeah hell yeah and i'm gonna have to tap in is that the one with like the really really popular album cover yeah it's like black and has like i forgot what what is that album cover called oh my gosh yeah i know exactly it's like it's like the pyramid looking it has different colors in it yeah, i only okay. really do it whenever i trip so. yeah yeah <laughs> i feel like i can see the cover in my head but uh i'm gonna definitely tap in with that for sure. Fire that your mom was like putting you on a Luther Vandross and all that. Cause it's like, that's Kim, like that's the majority of the music that was playing on Sundays when they cooking and cleaning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, all day. And even like gospel as well. I feel like as a listener, stuff like that kind of informed like the things that I take from it. You know, like when I listen to artists like yourself, that's how I can pull 
pull back all the different layers and, and notice all the different things, whether we talking ad libs or cadence or pitch. Um, it's just because you came up on that raw shit, you know? Facts. Ooh, I'm about to... Hold on. That shit hard. Oh, shit. How you do that? You got to go to the filters. Oh, see, I don't even know. I don't even be on IG. Okay. Shit, I haven't been on live in probably a year or two. I don't really get on live like that. Yeah? Yeah, I'm super chill. Like, I feel like I should start getting on live more to see, let people see more of my world, but that's, like, what I feel like the content, like, the blogging content for it. Like, I kind of just been, like, creating my own motion and just, like, about to put it out to the world, like, more on YouTube and stuff like that. Because I feel like live, you can't really dictate what happens on live. It's like, you be around your homie, somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know, Nah, that's a fact. Definitely uh, nerve wracking if you think too too hard about it. But uh, yeah. Um. So back to the to the lyrics. Like one thing I noticed about your sound, um, your fans will obviously agree. Uh, your perspective of romance. Um, like you pop that that player shit, and not even from a a sense of like infidelity, just like awareness. You know what I'm saying when it comes to like your situations and relationships. So, what's the key to staying sucker free when you dating? Um, the key to stay sucking free is just keep it pee. You know what I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> free wide sell, free wide sell. But, um, not yeah, just that part. And kind of just like, I feel as if if you let your intentions be known before anything, but like you can't receive karma or nobody can make you feel bad for not wanting to be with them. And I, I feel like I'm in a stage of my life right now where I'm just kind of just having fun. You know, like, I'm young, I'm 21 years old, like, I don't need to settle down or tie myself to nobody right now, like, you know, like, I still ain't been to Paris yet, I still have not traveled across the whole world, like, I need to see all these beautiful things that I hear in these songs that I see online, you know, so, how do you feel about love? Oh, man, um, that shit is a drug, I think that's the best way to describe it, like, it's going to provide, like, the best you've ever felt in your life. And, you know, the low might fuck around and be the lowest you ever felt in your life. But it's a pure thing. You know what I'm saying? I think it, it definitely takes work. And I'm not one of them people that's like, you got to go through shit to be happy and be in love. Like, I just mean in the yeah. sense of, you know, having that self-awareness and, and having, like, your goals set with your partner, being able to work with them and stuff. Um, so it's it's layered. It's like a a drug. If Once you once you ingest it, be ready for the ride. But if you go about it the right way, it's going to be one of the best best times or trips of your life, for sure. No, it's real shit. Yeah, and I, I, I fuck with how you said it's like a drug, because it is. I feel like whenever you do meet that person that you genuinely vibe with, it's like you can't get enough of them. You want to be around them consistently. They make you feel good. And I feel mm -hmm. like is that even as friends, you know, like just yeah, yeah. Yeah, like unconditional love for people and just like always want to make sure they're good. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I tweeted that at some point like a couple years ago, and I was like, damn, I think like being in love or like love is not just limited to like a romantic sense like you said that shit comes in all different all different like ways of life and stuff like that oh yeah um all right so bring me bring me back a little so after you start dropping songs they're getting traction um you're coming into yourself how did you end up signing a deal with with def jam like how did that come about so the way the Dev Jam deal came about was kind of just like, it was so weird because um, my a &R was already, I guess he was telling me he was already in my DMs before, but I was so naive at that point where I didn't think that people, I didn't think, I, I felt as if you, if you were in the industry, you had to have a blue check by your name. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not thinking somebody saying, oh, I'm an a &R from Dev Jam. I'm not thinking that they're being for real. And so I just remember literally going in the garage, smoking with my homie and getting a call from New York. And it's this a and named Tavis Chagwe. And he's just like, uh, is this Cash Pay Agent? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, Chagwe, I'm from Dev Jam. I'm like, damn. Like, he was talking so fast. And he was telling me, like, he wanted to fly me out to New York. And he got my contact information from my manager at the time. Because I guess, like, my manager gave him my number to, like, my bad. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it was just, like, whenever we got on the phone, I was like, man, like, I'm down to go to New York, but if I don't get an itinerary, I mean, shit, I mean, it's no point. It's like, no, nah, I'll send it to you right now. Send me your birthday, send me your name and stuff. All right, cool. So I sent them all that shit. I told my mama. My mama was like, yeah, let me search him up because you're just not finna go to New York with no random. I'm like, I respect it, though, you know what I'm saying? Oh, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, she searched him. She's like, oh, okay. Like, he, you know, it, but the thing is, he was a low-key a you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of just like, you couldn't find too much about him, but you found just enough. 
And he sent that itinerary and I went to New York the next day with my manager and nothing was the same after that. Like literally. Sheesh. What year was this? This was in shit, 2019. Okay. Okay, for sure. So how did it feel like you we ain't talking about just any regular degular label. We talking about Def Jam, like one of the most story in in history and music history. So did you feel any pressure signing to Def Jam or were you just fully ready to embrace everything that was gonna come with it in your career? Fully ready to embrace everything that came with it because so many people doubt you, you know, and I feel as if even now, you know, like, but I feel like doubt is what keeps me going because you'll never be able to stop my journey and what God has for me. You might think nobody listens to me. You might think that I'm a nobody, this, this, that, but I'm a somebody. I feel as everybody is a somebody. Everybody is special in their own way and we all shine in our own way. So I felt as at that point, I was just, I just had a point to prove and I was like, man, like these people actually care about me they care about my music and they're actually tapping into my catalog like they listen to my soundcloud records and yep. you know, told me that they really love those records and you know actually spent time with me and i feel like that's what it means like spending time with people and actually getting to know them instead of just you know judging them from whatever so yeah yeah no nah, that's that's well said right there um that same year park car combos came out mm -hmm. um I mean, obviously, love songs, over 200 million streams on it, just Spotify alone, 6-4. I mean, you could go down the whole track list, for real, for real. Um, but who were you at that time, uh, artist-wise, and what statement did you want to make with, with that project? I feel like at 18, I was talking about shit. You got to listen, I'm 18, coming up in Dallas, just graduated. It's kind of just, I'm signing a label now. Like, I'm just like, I'm big dog. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm oh. You know what I'm saying? I was so cocky at 18 because I'm just like, y'all can't tell me nothing. All these niggas that slept, this, this, that. You know what I'm saying? I had, <laughs> had something to prove mentality. And uh, when I was making Park Car Combos, at the time I was in the studio, well, I was in a dorm room recording with this producer named Sonic Major and really? still in college. And so I remember we would have to like stop doing music around eight or let's up because his uh, roommates would like, you know, like complain and stuff, but we made those songs. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> early in the day and it was just a part of history that I'll never forget because it's like making songs in dorm rooms that will potentially change your life is insane and when I made in dorm room I remember going to the studio playing that shit for Don you know so Jeez. yeah hell yeah you talking about Don Tolliver yeah that's that's how the Don Tolliver link up came about it was like I, I linked up with him and um at the studio it was what Atlantic yeah it was Atlantic Studios I pulled up over there okay and he was just like recording, like nonstop, just in the booth, just going, going, going. I was like, damn, like this nigga recording process is crazy because he'll just pull up a beat and just record. And I so he comes out and he was like, I love your music. Like, play me something, play me something. I was like, all right, bet. So I started playing him some songs and then I play Euphoria. He was like, oh, no, nah, run that shit back, run that shit back. I was like, ooh. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, we've been to have one for real. And so then um, I ran it back and he was like, oh, yeah, like open verse on it, cool. Load it up, I'm about to cut it. So he cuts the record. I'm like, damn, like this is gonna be like one of my biggest features right now. Because at that time, Park Our Combos ain't have no features. Yeah. And it was like the it like it was beginning of 2020. Cause I dropped Park Our Combos in 2019. Word. So I'm just like, man, I don't know what's about to happen. And I just remember like what a month later, they're like, Don wants the record. He wants to keep you first verse, and Travis is hopping on. And I was mm. like, this is wild, you know. Yeah. And I was like, this is wild, and it. Was, I feel like it was. It, everything happened for a reason, you know. Like COVID happened that year, and I was glad COVID happened because, you know, really? like life was coming way too fast for me, you know. And I, I didn't think I was ready for it, honestly. When you say it was coming way too fast, you mean like in your career? We talking like personal aspects, all of the above. I feel like both because it's like okay. Uh, love songs blew up at the end of 2019 mm -hmm. and have picture having the biggest song never really doing shows for real like I was kind of just doing house parties and performing at taco shops and you know like stuff like that and yeah. now everybody wants to put you on these big ass stages 7 p.m 8 p.m slots yep. you know, like I can't do that you know I used to make <laughs> <laughs> I used to make up so many excuses. I'll be like, I can't do that. You know, like that that's I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. And I just remember literally hearing, oh, COVID theater, like everything's locked down. I was like, shit. Well, thank God, because it was too many shows coming up my way. Where <laughs> I, 
I for sure was gonna be booed the fuck off stage at that time. I feel like oh, now man. presence is like it's it's fire and I'm growing every single day. But I feel like then hell no, nah, like you can't you can't see that's a that's a huge pivot. Yeah, yeah, and that answer is, is hella human, right? I think like from the outside perspective, you ex you don't expect for an artist to have feelings and sentiments like that. It's like, oh, this is what you do. Like, I'm sure it's easy, but it's like, nah, that shit is real. Like, it's a lot that comes with it mentally as well. Facts. Yeah. Yo, what steps did you take to, to get to that point where you're, like, comfortable now? Was it just experience or meditating? Like, how did, how did you get cool with experiences like that and just being in the forefront like you are? I feel like it came to me whenever I realized that not everybody's going to be a fan. Not everybody's not, not everybody's going to like your music. And you're going out there to cater not to only these people, but to yourself, you know, at the end of the day, like mm -hmm. you might, you, know, you might hit that note. This crowd might like you. This crowd might not like you. They there for Dirk. They there, you know, cause I started doing festival runs. So I feel like what made me grow was my team being on my side saying like, you're doing an amazing job. I would hear stuff like I had, like, I just did horrible. And like, look back at this video. People, you know, like people were fucking with you. And I'm just like, man, like, as an artist, you think so much. You see somebody like, you like, oh, they don't fuck with me. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. he's like, you be in the, you, you on the stage, pour your whole heart out, niggas over here. He's like, damn, like, you too cool for school and shit? Like, yeah. you, you know, I'm but like, you don't know what's going through their mind. They might really, not, like, they might fuck with you or they might just be vibing, like, who cares? But that's why I had to get myself out of the things of caring what other people thought about me because at the end of the day, when the world loves you, everybody loves you. When the world hates you, everybody hates you. It's all about what you think and what you know and what you love. At the, so, yeah. hey. it's a fact. Got to stay true to that. Facts. Um, it was interesting you said to me. Uh, obviously, part car combos didn't have any features. Uh, Teenage Fever though, you had a handful from fire artists. Don, obviously, SSG, Kobe, like Isaiah Rashad. Um, so what? What do you remember from putting putting that project together, and what was the logic behind you saying, "Okay, well, I'm gonna get busier on this on this collaboration"? Hmm. I feel like because I was 19, about to turn 20, and I was like teenage fever, like it's the summertime, like I need to drop one of those those ones because it was my debut, like my debut project, you know, like my first <laughs> ever album. And I would say like a lot of those like features were just like people are already fucked with, you know, people that fucked with my music, we always tapped in with each other. It wasn't like no rushed ass, like typical industry shit. It was like, nah, like people that genuinely tap in with you and want to work. And I feel like whenever I was making a project, I was going through so many different emotions as being like just a person. And I just wanted to pour it out and let people know that they're not alone. And, you know, like, it's just a relatable project, you know, like Mrs. Lonely, like everybody feels lonely. Oh, yes. <laughs> Trust. Like everybody feels so lonely and people don't want to speak about it or people think that they're too cool to speak about it. It's like, no, like, like, I'll be lonely. I hate being alone sometimes, but also it's nothing wrong with being alone. You know, it's just, it's normal. And like, what, soul ties, we were just talking about love the earth earlier. Like, you gonna have a relationship one day or you're gonna have a toxic thing where it's like you don't want to let go because y'all are intertwined with each other. It might not be good for you. But we've all been there. And I feel like what my whole goal is, is to keep just elevating as an artist and going through so many different experiences where people can listen to my music and relate. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, job well done. You already know that shit hits. I <laughs> miss well, it myself every day. Also, problems with Isaiah. And that's dope to hear you say, like, he was one of your favorite artists growing up. So what yeah. is that like? Like, collaborating with him and making some straight... He gave you a fire verse, too. Like, yeah. And it was wild. Whenever we linked up too, because it was like, damn, like I remember being like, oh, I got a guy out there, Rashad. And they're like, Isaiah ain't dropped in a long time. I don't know if this would be possible. I was like, man, no. I was like, I'm gonna reach out, or you know, like I need somebody to reach out. And he listened to my music. He was like, nah, I really fuck with her. And he was down to do the music video when we first linked up. I was like, man, like this nigga's dope. Like we yeah. sat still the whole time, got to know each other, took a few shots. You know what I'm saying? And just yeah. like. We was riding scooters and shit, driving around in the car, hot boxing. Like it was just really, a vibe. yeah, it was a vibe, and I really respected him and seeing him um, at Coachella this past, uh, what was it, last month or two months ago when I seen him? Mm -hmm. Real recent. Iconic. You know what I'm saying shit was iconic. You know, like yeah. just 
seeing somebody that's my favorite artist, you know, like on stage and being to be at a concert for real, for real. Like I never got to for real go to concerts like that. So yeah. like, nah, for sure. I identify with that specifically with Isaiah too. Like, um, like I was saying, like when I first started rediscovering rap, he was one of the people that I gravitated to, you know what I'm saying? I just felt like the music he was making was like an audio diary to the, the shit I was going through. So getting to this point, being able to like do a double XL interview with him or see him at a festival. I saw him in Vegas in like November. Like you said, it's, it's crazy, man. Shout out, shout out to him. It's crazy. Cause you be listening to your favorite, like that nigga come out and be playing modest or like, yeah. you be like, nigga, like, yeah, you're <laughs> one of the ones. you be in the crowd. Like, Hey, hey. and I Thanks. feel like that. And that's why I fuck with you. And that's why I fuck with like, just like the yeah, authentic. Because it's like you're you're a genuine person. You genuinely love you know people's music, and I feel like you people have shame with being a fan now. And I don't know why that is. Like people, oh, I'm not a fan. Shit, cool, but like nigga, haters. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Like bro, just say his music's hard. Like you're a, you're a fan. Like that's it's dope to be a fan of people's music. No yeah. matter if you're an artist, a regular person, like it doesn't fucking matter. Like everybody's a fan of somebody. Mm hmm. No, one hundred. Yo, how often? I got like three more questions. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Word. So, how often do you? I know you said like earlier in your career, maybe a little more. But how often do you pay attention to like fans and feedback? Um, because the game is it's in disarray right now. You know what I'm saying? Like the world is negative. Like we always need that that positivity. And like you said, like people front. You know what I'm saying? They could like something, they could play it, but it's like they they want to make a point of trying to tear it down. People rather engage with something they dislike as opposed to like just going past it. So yeah, how often do you pay attention to that kind um, of stuff? I like, I see people in the comments like, who the fuck are these people? Like, these are people, we are people that you got on live to say that about. We're people that right. take the time out of your day to right. come. <laughs> Obviously we're somebody, you know what I'm saying? I feel as if like people in the world need to start being nice to people. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know what people think, you know what I'm saying? Like are thinking in that moment. I just feel as if like, if we spread it more compliments than being a dry ass hater, just saying negative ass shit, it could be a way better place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, man. World needs healing for sure. You know what I'm saying? I pay attention to the comments all the time. Like my next project is called The Fall Off. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't dropped music in two years. Oh yeah. Okay. You know like I ain't dropped uh, music in two years, but that doesn't mean that I fell off. I did the shit with Beyonce. I was on Money Bag Yo's intro. I was on so many different things, but people don't pay attention, and that's fine because I don't. I don't expect the world to pay attention to me right now. You know what I'm saying? I expect people that already are tapped in and are my fans to pay attention to me because I know the world's gonna catch on. I don't know when they're gonna catch on, but when they do, it's gonna be exciting. You know what I'm saying? Because we need people to. We need new artists in the world. We need people to listen to this music and find all these other new artists that are coming about. I just feel as if it, the whole thing is motherfuckers really want to be cool. You know, I feel like that's the whole, like, you want to be too cool for school and it's like, you really look lame, you know? Yeah, yeah, 100. I relate, you know, I've been that type of person where I'm like, oh, I don't want to look lame to everybody. I got to this, this, that. But it's like, when you're really comfortable with yourself and knowing that like, we all have insecurities and it's not really that deep, then you'll eventually figure that out, you know? Preach, yeah. People got to go through that internal journey, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, you off to a good start, you know what I'm saying? Girlfriend, fire, 24 hours with little TJ. Um, both tracks out now. Are those both going to be on the project? Or are those, like, yeah, the project. But for sure, going to have more crazier records, like, on the project, too. I'm excited for it, because it's going to yeah. come out all too, where it's, like, you know, that cold music? Like, ooh, it's not yeah. good. Yeah, facts. That was how I uh, fell in love with House of Balloons, just being cold. Hey, oh, yeah. Hey. The trilogy, like, man, The weekend made me feel like I was high and I wasn't even smoking or doing right. drugs. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, God. that nigga vibe and his beat selection, like, I love the interludes and the intros and the outros. Like, that shit puts you somewhere. It's a nostalgic feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, you on your way, you know what I'm saying? Whether the people want to tap in now, later, I feel like you just increasingly getting big. I'm seeing your name a lot more, hearing it a lot more. Um, and the music has obviously been there from the very beginning. So, yeah, what do you want to leave the people with? Um, obviously, Project, the fall off coming in the fall, you said, but anything else they can expect from you? Um, expect another single in, um, in July. It's going to be a pop record. It's going to be something okay. 
everybody's familiar with. Everybody's used to me doing R&B, but I want everybody to know that I am a person just like you and I'm growing and I'm not going to be the same person I was yesterday, next week, a month from now, a year from now. We all growing and just like keep loving yourself, man. I feel like that's the best thing is keep loving yourself and never be afraid. Take risk. Yeah. Shit, real words right there. Yeah, I heard it like that. But no, nah, like I appreciate you too for like even taking time out of your day to like take, uh, do this interview with me. I really, I really do. Thank nah, you. I, I appreciate you. It's, the pleasure is all mine. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're supposed to be doing is, is spreading the platform and, and putting the really talented people in front of the folks. So thank you. Um, and until next time, you know it's all love. Hell yeah. Be safe, him. I'll see you soon. Likewise. Peace. Peace.